The U.S. Marine Corps has finally fielded its first amphibious combat vehicles, ACV. ACV is the first new amphibious vehicle since Vietnam and is expected to slowly replace the amphibious assault vehicles, AAV, which has been in service since the 1970s. Reports state that the new vehicles were introduced during a redesignation ceremony for Company D, 3rd Assault Amphibian Battalion, 1st Marine Division at Marine Corps Air Ground Combat Center, 29 Palms in California. The service said in a statement, The ceremony was held to officially introduce the Marine Corps Amphibious Combat Vehicle, which is meant to supplement and eventually replace the current amphibious assault vehicles. Viewers may note that the Corps had awarded a $198 million contract to BAE Systems to produce 30 low-rate production ACV vehicles back in June 2018. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer All Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. The Indian Army has completed establishing habitat facilities to protect its soldiers on the Line of Actual Control LAC, as the standoff between Indian and Chinese troops continues on the icy heights of eastern Ladakh. According to official sources, troops on the front line are accommodated in heated tents as per tactical considerations of their deployment as the temperature in eastern Ladakh dips to minus 30 to 40 degrees Celsius coupled with wind chill factor. It's to be noted that the Indian and Chinese sides have racked up a large number of troops in eastern Ladakh. Indian Army has deployed over 50,000 troops in the sector, which is approximately four times the usual deployment in the area. It was estimated that around 10,000 to 12,000 assorted habitats would be required for the troops. This included Arctic tents to accommodate three to four people, as well as two types of fiberglass huts that can house four to six troops and another with a capacity of eight to ten people. In addition, prefabricated shelters to house around 20 people as well as stores were also made available apart from bathing cubicles and kitchens. The Russian Defense Ministry is finalizing a plan to build a naval base on Sudan's east coast. This would provide the Russian Navy with its second overseas facility after the one on Sirius Tardis following the closure of bases in Cuba and Vietnam. The facility was referred to as a logistical support center, where repairs and supply operations and rest for crew members can take place, and a draft agreement has already been signed. The base will be located on the northern outskirts of Port Sudan, and Russia will also gain the right to transport weapons, ammunition, and equipment for the base through Sudanese ports and airports. Reports state that the facility would have a capacity for 300 military and civilian personnel and four ships, and would be able to accommodate nuclear vessels. This indicates that it would be pretty large, and heavy warships could be accommodated. In the month of August, China fired two of its most capable conventional missiles, a DF-26 Intermediate Range Ballistic Missile IRBM, and DF-21D Anti-Ship Ballistic Missile ASBM, into the South China Sea from bases in the mainland. Till now, there were no reports of how these tests went. A former senior colonel of the People's Liberation Army has now claimed that these missiles hit a moving ship target near the Paracel Islands. 
Wang, who is now a professor at Beihang University in Beijing, said, So several days later, after the aircraft carrier maneuvers, we launched the DF-21 and DF-26, and the missiles hit a vessel sailing south of the Paracel Islands. He added in a closed-door meeting of the Mugen Shan Forum in Zhejiang, Shortly after that, an American military attaché in Geneva complained and said it would lead to severe consequences if the missiles hit an American aircraft carrier. They see this as a show of force, but we are doing this because of their provocation. Pointing to the U.S. military flying a U-2S Dragon Lady spy plane near a Chinese naval live fire drill in the Bohai Sea. The U.S. had said that the flight was within the accepted international rules and regulations governing aircraft flights. The U.S. Air Force is officially working to replace its inventory of up-armored Humvees with Joint Light Tactical Vehicles JLTV. The service stated that the U.S. Air Force's Agile Combat Support Directorate is working with the U.S. Army to acquire and field approximately 3,230 Joint Light Tactical Vehicles starting in 2021. The U.S. Army first provided JLTV to soldiers in January 2019. Al Bello, Chief of the Division's Mobility and Vehicles Branch, said in a statement, The JLTV is much more capable than the Humvee. Besides the technological advances, the ride and comfort of the vehicle is so much better, especially when you're going over uneven terrain. JLTV is especially known to have better protection against IED, that is, improvised explosive devices. The U.S. Air Force is planning to acquire three types of JLTV variant, a general purpose vehicle, a utility vehicle, and a heavy guns carrier. Japan is retiring its final F-4 Phantom II fighters from combat role. An official event was organized. The fighters have served for around 48 years. The aircraft were from the 301 Hikotai, the country's last combat unit equipped with the type. The remaining four FEJs will only be flown by the country's air development and test wing going forward. In 1968, Japan and McDonnell Douglas had got into a contract. An order was placed for 140 F-4EJ versions based on the U.S. Air Force's then-standard F-4E. An initial pair from the production line in St. Louis, Missouri touched down in Japan on July 25, 1971. All the others were completed under license by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries (MHI). Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps has unveiled an interesting new multi-role warship that it says is armed with anti-ship and surface-to-air missiles and is also designed to carry helicopters, drones, and fast attack boats. The vessel named Shahid Rudaki is a former roll-on, roll-off ship that has been adapted for military use. It is thought to be 492 feet long and has a displacement of 4,000 tons. The vessel was accepted into the fleet in a ceremony attended by IRGC Commander Major General Hussein Salami, as well as several senior military officials. According to Iran's Tasneem News Agency, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Navy, or IRGC, plans to use the Shahad Rudaki as a marine city able to carry out a wide range of missions, including combat, reconnaissance, and logistics, with the purpose of ensuring sustainable security in maritime routes and rescuing trade vessels and fishing boats of Iran and regional countries. Secretary of the U.S. Navy Kenneth Braithwaite has stated that he's looking to establish a new naval command with a particular focus on the Indian Ocean and adjacent areas of the Pacific. This announcement comes as the U.S. Indian 
Japanese and Australian navies are taking part in a major maritime drill named Exercise Malabar. The move could be seen as a way to counter China's growing strategic muscle in the region, as well as challenge its overreaching geopolitical ambitions. Mr. Braithwaite added that the plan is for this new unit to be designated U.S. First Fleet, which previously oversaw American naval operations in parts of the Western Pacific from 1947 to 1973. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.